by Nielsen. Nielsen had an admiral right there in his kitchen. Maroon didn't like that, gave him a whack. And now grabbing on to Maroon is going to be Nathan McEver. And those two are going to fight back beyond the goal line down to our left. A couple of rights, a couple of jabs now from McEver. Maroon comes back with a big right hand of his own. He's got McEver ducking down. Now McEver comes back with a nice right hand. They move out near the goal area as the goal is pushed away from the pegs. McEver and Maroon spinning one another about, trying to get in a few punches. Finally, Maroon comes in with one. Not sure if it caught McEver, but he loses his balance and goes down to the ice. Backing up, knocks the goal off the pegs. Yeah, the drill man at the ready in case his services are needed. But apparently not. Nilsson reaches back, gives the net a little push, and now he does so again, and it quickly comes off the pegs. I think Nilsson's trying to tell the officials they need to have the by the goaltender, Anders Nilsson. Bridgeport back once again into the Norfolk zone. A man cuts to the right side, ring drops it in front of the net, where it is tapped in for a goal. John Pearson picks up the loose puck after his teammate had dropped it right at the edge of the goal mouth. Anderson tried to kick it away, but didn't knock it away far enough. And John Pearson, the rookie out of Sweden, has his eighth goal of the year. And Bridgeport is drawn first one tonight. The Admiral goal played out by Holland. Holmstrom gets it right back up ahead. And passing to Johan Sundstrom. And Sundstrom with a shot from the high slot goes wide to the Admiral goal. Collected there by Henry. Long lead pass ahead. Smith Pelly over the line to Paul Mary. Gets by one man. Cuts by another. Stick handling. Trying to jab it home. Save made. Traffic jam in front. Shot score! Devontae Smith Pelly scores on a rebound. As the toys come raining to the ice, the Admirals have tied the game at one goal apiece. We're going to get another fight. It will be Galand, who I mentioned a moment ago, their tough guy, along with the Admirals' Troy Bodie. They'll skate out to the red line, toss away the gloves and the helmet. They grab on near the penalty boxes, and Bodie starts it out with a big right. Galand comes back with a couple of rights of his own. An uppercut from Bodie. Bodie loses his balance. Galand goes down on top of it. Bodie a couple of inches taller, but Galand's about as tough as they come in the AHL. We watch a replay here from our broadcast position. And, oh, we see the first punch. Bodie landed a big right, right to the side of the head. And Gallant came back two punches later and put one right near the nose of Bodie. Yeah. And the net chips near the corner for the captain, McDonald. Here's Colin McDonald, who got the captain seat just a week or so ago. Back beyond the net. Wrap around score. Anderson laid in getting back off to his left side. That's his glove side. And a Sound Tiger back beyond the net beats him on the wraparound. And the Sound Tigers have their second goal on just five shots tonight. They've taken a 2 1 lead on the strike by Brock Nelson, his 11th of the year. Hendry, Hendry looking low, throws it low. Deflection, score! Peter Holland deflecting Jordan Hendry's shot from midair. All hands on deck as the Apples, on a power play, have tied the game. It's Peter Holland that deflected it from midair. Patrick Boom was standing in front of the net. But I thought it was tipped about halfway there by Holland. Either way, it was tipped. We'll wait for the official the ice. Now we've got a little rhubarb breaking out along the blue line. A man jumping on Bodie. John Kurtz is on, trying to yank him off. And Kurtz wants to go with David Olstrom. Olstrom just goes down to the ice and puts his hands over his head. Kurtz pushing him away. Meanwhile, Rose Hill grabbing on with Pearson. Nothing much happening there. Now we'll get John Kurtz who's going to fight with Nathan McEver. These two will go out along the blue line near the Admiral bench. Both guys grabbing on. Kurtz missing with an uppercut. Now tries it overhand right. Doesn't do anything. McEver with a right to the back of the head of Kurtz. No damage done there. They spin one another around. Both guys angling for some leverage. Kurtz with a short right. Doesn't do anything there. Kurtz now comes back with another right. A little short jabbing right by McEver. 
They push one another up against the boards by the Atwell's bench. They grow weary, and the linesmen separate them. Five-game suspension? Uh, Six-game suspension. This is his fourth game out, so we won't see him this weekend. Here's Ty Wisher a driving blast from the blue line, and he scores. He got a screen in front, and the former Admiral comes home to haunt his former franchise as he puts it in and puts the Sound Tigers back in front. Yeah, I don't think that touched the thing. Actually, it just cleared the bottom. Apples being led by Peter Holland with five shots on goal tonight. Four for Edom. Here's Wagner to the back door. He's got a man there who ties the game. Patrick Maroon on just his second shot of the night. Deadlocks it at three with 2.45 to play. Just what we were talking about, big bodies in front of the net. He was right there creating a screen, and just as, as Wagner picked the puck up, Maroon just softly backs out. Oh, wide open net. Nice play, nice pass by Chris Wagner. That's been a nice line. Tip from Paul Mary, who couldn't quite put his lumber on it. Brought back out of there by Sezikas. Racing back to the Atwell zone. Cutting around to Holland, getting crammer, hammered right into the goal by Matt Clark. Puck ends up in the net. Anderson is down hurt. The red light came on briefly. But I think the official has ruled that the goal was knocked off the pegs. Boy, Matt Clark absolutely hammered. Sezikas knocking him firmly into Anderson and the Atwell's trainer is out to check on Frederick Anderson who took the brunt of that hit. You know in years past uh, you, you would see the guy, the guys going through the lane like that would always end up getting a goalie interference call and they haven't been calling that near as much this year. Now the officials are going to confer our referee Trent Nord chatting with at least one of the linesmen uh, 